We're very, very rare configurations of atoms, I think. There are about 300 million planets in our galaxy alone that might support life as we know it. By the sheer number of these planets, it can be argued that we are most likely not unique in the galaxy. I just can't believe this hasn't happened in other places. The question is how often does it happen and how widely spaced are the civilizations? Brian Cox's insights into the world of exoplanets or extrasolar planets are truly captivating. These planets, which orbit stars outside our solar system, are crucial for understanding the universe. They're key to comprehending the universality of planetary formation and exploring the potential for life beyond our home planet. What's more, exoplanets have been discovered around a myriad of stars, from red dwarfs to sun-like stars, and even within binary star systems. Most of those stars now we know have planetary systems. We estimate there are something like 20 billion Earth-like planets, or potentially Earth-like planets, in the Milky Way galaxy alone. This diversity showcases the varied environments where planets can form and thrive, opening our eyes to the vast possibilities of the cosmos. Now, the methods used to discover these distant worlds are as intriguing as the planets themselves. Take the transit method, for instance. It's quite a clever way to spot an exoplanet. Astronomers look for a slight dimming in a star's brightness, which occurs when a planet passes or transits in front of it. This decrease in brightness can tell us a lot about the planet, like its size. A larger planet will block more light, leading to a more noticeable dip. Additionally, the frequency of this dimming can reveal the planet's orbital period, giving us an idea of how close it is to its star. But it's not without its limits. This method tends to favor larger planets and only works if the planet's orbit is aligned just right from our perspective. It's also influenced by the type of star being observed. One of the most exciting outcomes of this method has been the numerous discoveries made by the Kepler Space Telescope. A recent study shared on a preprint server showed that the telescope could discover signs of atmospheres capable of supporting life on alien worlds beyond our solar system in only about 20 hours. Kepler really changed the game, revealing a multitude of exoplanets and thereby broadening our understanding of the universe. It's fascinating to think about how these distant worlds, each unique and mysterious, orbit their stars, potentially holding secrets to questions we've been asking for centuries. Brian Cox has a way of discussing these topics that not only educates but ignites a sense of wonder. His ability to bring these complex astronomical concepts down to Earth, so to speak, opens up a universe of possibilities and encourages us to look up at the stars with a new perspective. The Kepler Space Telescope, launched by NASA back in 2009, really opened up a new chapter in our quest to understand the universe. It's kind of like a cosmic detective, specifically designed to hunt for Earth-sized planets using what's known as the transit method. Imagine this, Kepler staring at over 150,000 stars, waiting for the telltale dimming that happens when a planet crosses in front of a star. It's a bit like watching for a tiny shadow to pass across a bright light. Kepler's primary mission was to figure out how common planets like Earth are in the habitable zones of sun-like stars. Think of it as looking for cozy neighborhoods in space where life as we know it could potentially exist. The telescope was equipped with a photometer, a super sensitive instrument that could detect even the slightest changes in a star's brightness. And wow, did it find a lot. I think the, the planets around Alpha Centauri, Proxima Centauri, which are the closest stars, it seems like there are planets around those now. And I think that, that was interesting because we could conceive of going there. Kepler confirmed over 2,600 exoplanets, which is a huge chunk of the total number we know about today. The variety is astonishing too, from massive gas giants, way bigger than Jupiter, to little rocky ones that could fit in your pocket if they weren't so far away and, you know, made of molten lava or something. One of its headline discoveries was Kepler 22b, the first confirmed exoplanet found in the habitable zone of a star much like our Sun. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Differentiating the dimming caused by a planet from the natural variability in a star's brightness was quite the puzzle. Imagine trying to spot a firefly in front of a spotlight. It's that kind of challenge. Plus, the sheer amount of data Kepler sent back was overwhelming. It's like trying to sift through every grain of sand on a beach looking for treasure. They even got the public involved through projects like Planet Hunters, where regular folks could help sort through the data. 
Kepler was supposed to be a 3.5-year operation, but it was so good at its job that they kept extending the mission. Even when it ran into technical issues, losing two of its four reaction wheels, the team didn't give up. They got creative and started the K2 mission, using the sun and the remaining wheels to stabilize the telescope. Kepler kept on trucking, finding more exoplanets and looking into other cosmic phenomena until 2018. The legacy of Kepler is just mind-blowing. It's like it rewrote the astronomy textbooks. We now have a much better idea of how many planets there might be out there and what they're like. It's also shown us that habitable planets might not be as rare as we once thought. Even now, long after Kepler's mission has ended, scientists are still combing through its data, uncovering new findings. It laid the groundwork for future missions like the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite and the James Webb Space Telescope. In a way, Kepler changed how we see ourselves in the universe. It's shown us that planets are a common feature around stars, making our galaxy look like a busy city full of different neighborhoods, each with its own character. And what we find is that we, there's precisely the right amount of stuff in the universe to have a completely flat universe. And the, the, the explanation, the most favoured explanation for that, is the universe is way bigger than the piece we can see. The array of exoplanets discovered in the cosmos is truly mind-boggling, and it's a topic that Brian Cox has a fantastic way of bringing to life. Imagine a universe where planets come in all shapes and sizes, far beyond our earlier expectations. We've got gas giants, massive planets like Jupiter and Saturn, composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. They don't really have a solid surface, and their thick atmospheres add to their mystery. Interestingly, some of these gas giants are found orbiting super close to their stars, much closer than we ever thought possible, challenging our theories of how planets form. Then there are the ice giants, kind of like our own Uranus and Neptune. These are packed with heavier substances like water, ammonia and methane. They're a bit smaller than their gas giant cousins, but still larger than the rocky planets we're more familiar with. Speaking of rocky planets, these are the Earth-like ones, made mostly of rock and metal. They're the kind of planets where you'd expect to find solid ground under your feet. Their sizes and compositions can vary wildly, making each discovery unique. One of the more intriguing types is the hot Jupiters. Picture a gas giant, but instead of being far from their star, like Jupiter, they're incredibly close, even closer than Mercury is to our Sun. Their years can be just a few Earth days long, these planets are scorching hot and their atmospheres might be nothing like we've ever seen, thanks to the intense radiation they receive from their stars. So it's a natural part of the evolution of the universe that you get a period in time when there's complexity in the universe. So stars and planets and galaxies and life and civilizations. But they, are, they exist because the universe is decaying, not in spite of the fact the universe is decaying. And we can't forget about the super-Earths, these are planets larger than Earth, but not quite as big as the smaller gas giants. Some might be rocky, and could even be in the habitable zone of their stars, making them potential candidates for hosting life. For many of these exoplanets, especially those that pass in front of their stars, astronomers have been able to peek into their atmospheres. They're looking for biomarkers, things like oxygen, ozone, methane and water vapor, which could hint at the possibility of life. Brian Cox has been instrumental in unraveling these complex ideas and making them accessible and exciting. His way of explaining things, whether on TV, in lectures or in his writings, really sparks a sense of wonder. He links the study of exoplanets directly to the search for life, discussing the potential conditions on these distant worlds and what they could mean for life as we know it. But it's not just about the science. Cox also gets into the philosophical and existential side of things, pondering what these discoveries mean for our understanding of life in the universe and our place within it. What will the future look like with intelligent machines? AI has been growing exponentially in the past decade. Artificial intelligence will probably be one of the biggest scientific breakthroughs in the 21st century. The idea of using artificial intelligence to discover alien life is not just a sci-fi fantasy anymore. It's a real possibility that's got astronomers and tech enthusiasts buzzing with excitement. Imagine this. AI, with its powerhouse abilities to crunch data, spot patterns and learn on the fly, becoming our cosmic detective in the vastness of space. 
AI is really being used all across the space exploration enterprise. Everything from making the spacecraft smarter to analyzing the huge data sets on the ground and then to operating things like the communications antennas that we need to talk to the spacecraft. First off, think about the sheer amount of data we get from space missions and telescopes like TESS, Kepler and the James Webb Space Telescope. We're talking about a mountain of information that would take humans ages to sift through. But AI, it can zip through this data, picking out relevant signals and dumping the cosmic noise, which is super important if we're trying to catch a whisper from an alien world. Now let's talk about patterns. Space is full of them, but we're interested in the weird ones, the anomalies. AI has a knack for spotting things that don't quite fit, like strange dips in starlight that might hint at megastructures built by advanced civilizations, or unusual radio waves that aren't just random space chatter. We can train AI models to be on the lookout for these kinds of cosmic oddities, but AI isn't just about looking at what's already there. It's also about predicting where we might find signs of life. I just see it uh, as a beginning. Uh, not just this flight, but in this program, which has really been a very short piece of human history. Using what we know about life-friendly conditions, AI can simulate different scenarios, guiding our telescopes to the most promising corners of the galaxy. Now this brings us to our next point. In 2015, while a massive Earth observatory was capturing evidence of the 4D fabric of space-time, scientists embarked on an intriguing quest. They pondered whether intelligent extraterrestrial beings might have constructed an enormous scientific structure, and if so, could we possibly detect it? This speculative idea might sound like science fiction, but it's grounded in a real scientific study. The study revolves around a star known as Boyajian Star, named after the lead author of the research. Situated about 1,470 light-years away, this star became the center of attention due to some unusual observations made by NASA's Kepler telescope. Researchers examining the data noted strange dips in the star's light, which sparked curiosity and a range of theories, including the possibility of an alien megastructure. This star's peculiar behavior led to widespread interest and speculation. The idea that we might have stumbled upon an alien creation was thrilling, but beyond the excitement, this situation provided a unique opportunity for scientists to explore and understand the myriad of natural phenomena occurring in our vast universe. Whether it's an alien megastructure or a natural cosmic event, Boyajian's star certainly gave astronomers and space enthusiasts something extraordinary to ponder. When we use telescopes to study stars, they often detect dips in the light emitted by these stars. It's like when you're looking at a bright light bulb and suddenly someone walks in front of it causing a brief interruption in the light you see. Generally, these dips in starlight are caused by exoplanets passing in front of their stars, but things got really interesting with Boyajian's star. Unlike the usual spherical shapes we expect to cause these dips, the pattern observed at Boyajian's star was different. Daniel Giles, a researcher at the SETI Institute, made an intriguing observation during the 243rd meeting of the American Astronomical Society. He said that the objects causing the dips in Boyajian's star's light were not spherical, but rather appeared as a collection of panels. This unique shape led to some exciting speculations. Could it be an alien megastructure, something straight out of a sci-fi novel? This hypothesis set the astronomy world abuzz. Following the 2015 discovery, there was a flurry of activity news articles, follow-up studies, and a lot of discussions within the astronomical community. But let's cut to the chase. The eventual consensus was that these unusual light patterns were not the work of an advanced alien civilization. Instead, Giles later suggested that it was probably something much more mundane, like cosmic dust. Yet the very notion that it could have been something else, even briefly, captured our imagination. The story of how researchers stumbled upon the peculiar signals from Boyajian's star is almost as fascinating as the discovery itself. Daniel Giles revealed that these signals were initially overlooked in the Kepler data. It was actually citizen scientists engaged in a different quest who accidentally noticed the strange dips in light. Giles sums it up perfectly. People weren't looking. But now, that's exactly what he and his team are focused on doing. They're convinced that the key to uncovering the truth about aliens might just be hidden in plain sight within the data we've already collected. 
Giles and his team are now embarking on a mission to sift through the vast data collected by NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. They're hunting for anomalies in starlight, dips that don't fit the usual patterns in shape, depth, or timing. These outliers in the cosmic data are their targets. The process is a blend of technology and human ingenuity. Test data provides around 60 million light curves, which are graphs showing the brightness of stars over time. Giles explains this as counting photons. To manage this colossal amount of data, they're turning to machine learning. The satellite has observed various sky sectors for about 30 days each, taking snapshots every 30 minutes. These observations have resulted in millions of light curves for stars brighter than magnitude 14. In the magnitude system, brighter objects have smaller numbers, so they have a lot of bright stars to analyze. The team's strategy involves organizing these light curves based on characteristics like shape and periodicity. Giles mentions the need for cheap metrics for initial sorting, followed by more detailed analyses for promising candidates. This two-tier approach helps in narrowing down the immense data to a manageable size, ensuring that any significant findings are not just instrumentation errors, but actual astrophysical phenomena. But here's where the human element comes in, manual inspection. Giles believes that nothing is better at finding weird stuff than the human eye. This sentiment is echoed in their approach. Despite the advances in machine learning, it's the human capacity to spot anomalies and make intuitive connections that drives this search. Giles emphasized the limits of machine learning in this context. Without a ground truth or a known standard for what constitutes weird or interesting, machines can only go so far. It's the human knack for detecting oddities and piecing together information that might eventually lead us to discover something truly extraordinary, like evidence of intelligent alien life. This blend of technology and human curiosity underscores our quest to understand the universe, a quest driven as much by our sophisticated tools as by our innate sense of wonder. The challenges scientists face in understanding and replicating human movement in robotics offer a fascinating parallel to the hurdles encountered in machine learning and artificial intelligence, particularly in the field of astronomy. It's like this. We as humans often don't fully understand the intricate details of how our bodies work. They just do. Take our fingerprints, for instance. Only recently, research has made a breakthrough in understanding how fingerprints enhance our grip. It's something we do instinctively, like holding a slippery dish just right to prevent it from falling. Scientists had to actually create a new law of physics to explain this seemingly simple human instinct. This dilemma mirrors the challenges in ML and AI. How do you program a machine to search for something we haven't discovered or don't fully understand yet? It's akin to the excitement surrounding the James Webb Space Telescope, heralded for potentially answering cosmic questions we haven't even thought to ask yet. Daniel Giles acknowledges these limitations in artificial intelligence and machine learning, but he also sees immense potential as long as we understand the specific roles these technologies play. It's a balancing act between leveraging what AI can do and recognizing its limits. But here's an interesting twist. Giles and his team are actively trying to bridge this gap by programming specific anomalies into their search algorithms. They've injected nearly 2 million artificial signals into light curves. These are the graphs that show how the brightness of stars changes over time. The goal? To see if their systems can detect these anomalies, which could indicate something unusual happening in space, like the elusive megastructures they're curious about. So far, the results haven't pointed to any alien megastructures, but they've certainly uncovered some intriguing data. It's a journey of discovery, where each new finding, even if it's not the anticipated megastructure, adds a piece to the vast puzzle of our universe. The effort underscores a crucial point in scientific exploration. Sometimes the path to uncovering big answers lies in the search for the right questions.